In this video, we'll be showing you how to transfer data from BigQuery into Microsoft SQL Server. Let's dive in. Um, so we're just going to take this uh, select star from this uh, staging football matches uh, table, and we're just going to limit it to 10 rows just for the speed of the tutorial. Uh, you can take as many rows as you'd like uh, through this process, but we'll just keep 10 just for this tutorial. Um, and you can see what the table looks like with the season dates, with teams and whatnot. So we're going through actual soccer matches or football matches here. Uh, so let's jump into Shipyard and show how we can make this process go through. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is search for our BigQuery blueprints. And you can see we have a we have a blueprint called Store Query Results as a CSV. I'm going to click that. Uh, that's going to pop up with a BigQuery authorization guide. So if this is your first time using Shipyard and especially using BigQuery inside of Shipyard, uh, it'd be great to hit that button and it, it'll walk you through the authorization steps to get BigQuery working inside of Shipyard. I'm going to close that for right now. Uh, I can name my vessel store query results as CSV. Um, I'm going to grab that query that I had from before and paste it in there in the query local file name. I'm going to call this test.csv. Um, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're making a fleet with, you know, multiple, uh, multiple vessels that are storing query results as a CSV, you'll probably want to be a little bit more specific with that naming, but for this tutorial test.csv, test.csv will be fine. Um, and the last thing we need for our BigQuery vessel is a, our service account. So I'm going to paste that in there. Um, so it's also important to note for each vessel inside of Shipyard, you can set up email notifications to notify you if any errors happen or after an on-demand run is finished. Um, and there's also guardrails to protect against the number of retries, the time between retries, and runtime cutoff as well. Um, so that's our BigQuery vessel. It's good to go. Um, so now we need to get our Microsoft SQL Server vessel. Um, so it's upload CSV to table. Um, so I'm going to take that there, upload CSV to table, and I just need my SQL Server information. So my host, my username, my password, the database, which ours is testdb, um, and then the file name, so that, that was test.csv. If you remember, so it has to match it from the vessel at the beginning, so Shipyard knows that those are the same files that you want to work with. A table name, I'm going to name this data from BigQuery. Um, and then you can append, replace, or add data only if the table's empty. Uh, I'm just going to leave it append for right now. Um, so it looks like this vessel is good to go. So I can connect these two vessels together. Um, and I like to read out my fleets and try to you know proofread them before uh, before I run them. So looking at this, so I have this first vessel that's going to store the query results from BigQuery as a CSV. If that's successful in the middle, then I can upload that CSV to a table in SQL Server. So it looks like we're good to go. So I'm going to click on my fleet settings and name this fleet. Uh, BigQuery to Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, so I can click Save and Finish. So whenever I click Save and Finish, it's going to take me to a screen telling me that the fleet has been created successfully, um, and I can click Run Your Fleet. So whenever I click Run Your Fleet, you're going to see that it says the fleet is, was successfully scheduled to run immediately. So in Shipyard, we call this an on-demand run. Um, so you can kick off an, you can kick off an on-demand run when you're working with your fleets by clicking the purple Run Now button on the top right-hand corner of the fleet page. Um, so that's going to kick off an on-demand run anytime you want to kick it off. Um, so there's two other ways in Shipyard, two other ways inside of Shipyard to um, to kick off a fleet run, and it's in our Triggers tab here. So if I click on that, you can see that we have a scheduling trigger as well as an API webhook trigger. Um, so if you want to schedule based on time or if you want to programmatically kick off a fleet, uh, you can do that with the webhook. Uh, if I go back to our logs, you can see there's our fleet, um, and so you can see it's began running. Um, and so you can see in the Gantt chart here in the middle, uh, it's yellow. So that means that first vessel has started running. Um, and so I can even click into that and it's going to give me the live py Python output. You can see it's actually finished now. Uh, so you can see all the inputs that we put in here and you can see that, 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 uh, Google service account is, uh, is XXX out so that, you know, someone else from your organization can't come into your logs, um, and look and see what that service account is since it's usually protected by user. Um, and you can see that that successfully stored query to test.csv there. Um, so you can see that went ahead and kicked off our second vessel just like we wanted it to. We wanted it to kick up the second vessel based on a, uh, based on the success of the first vessel. Um, and now the second vessel is completed, so now I can open up Microsoft SQL Server here, and we can look and see at we can look and see that data that came in the SQL Server. Um, as soon as this loads up here. First time using SQL Server today, so it can be a little slow sometimes. Okay, so databases, test DB here, 
and you can see there's our data from BigQuery table, and I can go in, select the top 1,000 of that. And if it it'll run that, then you can see there's that data that we saw earlier inside of BigQuery, now inside of SQL Server. Uh, so in this video, we went through how to take data from BigQuery into Microsoft SQL Server. If you have any questions about this solution or any other potential solution, use the link in the description to set up a time to chat with our team of data experts. You can go to shipyardapp.com to start building powerful workflows just like this for free. Want to see us tackle more solutions? Check out these related videos.